as China moves forward with ambitious plans to move 250 million rural residents into cities by 2025, farmland is being replaced by high-rise buildings at an unprecedented pace. But the timeline of the massive migration is so rapid and far-reaching, there are concerns that some people will be left behind. While one byproduct of the urban movement could be the creation of a consumer culture, another possible result could be the creation of a very large group of farmers unable to find their way in their new environment. On the outskirts of Xi'an, Yang Jingxin and his family have been living with his nephew since his village was bulldozed three years ago. The situation is like this. There are six people in my family. Me, my wife, my mom, my son, daughter-in-law, and grandson. Six people. Our entire income is from my son and daughter-in-law. Residents transitioning from farm to city are given various government compensations, including money and new apartments. But Mr. Yang claims he has received nothing from the farm which he says was taken. With his farm and way of life buried in the past, Mr. Yang says he doesn't have the resources to live a modern life. Many of those who moved from rural areas were surviving off the land. They grew vegetables, raised animals, and drew water from their own wells. But in the city, their skills as farmers don't help bring money to the table. In a low-rise building down the street, Mr. Yang gathers with his neighbors from his former village every day, smoking cigarettes and drinking tea. The mood in the room is dark. Many here say they have been waiting nearly three years for compensation or new houses in the city. Come on. They forcefully tore down my house. They hired some jobless guys and thugs. They climbed over my wall and into my yard. They ripped the keys away from my belt and opened the inside lock of my house door. They dragged me away and lifted my wife out. Then they drove an excavator in and destroyed my house. The government says it's working to adjust laws to better protect farmers' rights. But many in this village have stories of being bullied out or forced to sign contracts they were not allowed to read. We haven't got a penny now, not a penny. They told us that the accountant was ready, that they would first tear down your house and then give you the money. But there was no contract. Claiming their houses were torn down without any official paperwork, this group hired a lawyer from Beijing to help get a settlement. However, the case did not get far after the lawyer says he was intimidated by powerful developers. In the end, we didn't reach an agreement. They got violent and took me away from the villagers' home. They hit me in the head, slapped my face, and pushed me down the stairs. Then they forced me into the car and kept hitting me. They wouldn't let me leave for hours. They forced me to meet their leader. They took me there and pushed me out of their car. I saw the office of their leader. I thought I would be safe, but it wasn't true. I was pushed into the office and I saw him sitting behind the desk. He was just staring at me. Then the thugs poured tea on my face and body. He just stared at me in silence. As China's urbanization machine rolls onward, some experts believe human rights may be a victim of what the Chinese government calls progress. One result could be a growing underclass of angry farmers turned unemployed urban citizens. If you go to write a complaint letter, you will find most letters are like stones dropped into the sea. Or some departments will just leave it to a lower branch. But the lower branch is actually the problem maker. So after you write a letter, your complaint will go to the people that made the problem. So you can imagine, how can a problem be solved? It's very difficult. I don't know how to live anymore. I've just been borrowing money and doing some small jobs to earn some cash. I've used my savings to support our lives. In the future, I don't think we can continue to live like this. We've lost our basic life insurance. The future's dark for us and we don't know where to go. Reporting for the New York Times in China, this is Jonah Kessel.